Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our, our Heavenly Father, Father we, we have sinned, sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant us that we may serve you in unity of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The first reading is taken from the fifth chapter of the book of Amos. The day of the Lord, a dark day. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them and the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. This is the word of the Lord. The reading is from the fourth chapter of the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians, the coming of the Lord. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven.
The Lord be with you. And also, also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. And this makes sense that if God is going to be gentle and merciful, liberating and saving the people who cry out to him for help, God has also to be strong and just, destroying the things that bind and oppress them. Jesus knew the Old Testament well. It was the bedrock of his culture and his language. And when one day his disciples remarked to him about the wonder of the temple that stood in Jerusalem, he began to speak in the language of prophecy. 
God had come to the world with gentleness and mercy to offer the world salvation and healing. But that was not the end of this pivotal world event. Jesus predicted the coming destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. The destruction of the physical building and the institution that controlled it, but also the whole idea of this building being the symbol of God's presence with God's people. And Jesus warned the leaders of the Jewish people that if they did not embrace Jesus' way, the way of peace, but took up arms against the Romans, this would be the consequences. And Amos, from our first reading, is warning the people of his time too. He lived in the years of the kings in the divided nations, shortly before the fall of Israel, a time of prosperity and great social inequality. The rich were extravagant and self-indulgent, and the poor were exploited and forgiven. Their religion had become a matter of empty rituals, and their political leaders relied on inept and unwise advice. The people of that time thought God would come to give people with good times, with blessings for them. But Amos tells a different story. They had forgotten the covenant. They were not looking to God for guidance. They were trusting in the strength of armies to defend them. Don't look for friends in the surrounding nations, God said to them through the prophet. The consequences of that will be disaster for Israel. Seek me and live, God says. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. This is the way to peace for nations, for local communities, peace with our families and friends, peace with our neighbours and our work colleagues. And it can start with each of us seeking peace with God, seeking God, getting to know God, learning God's ways, praying and working for God's kingdom of justice and peace to come on earth as it is in heaven. The Christians in the young church in Thessalonica were anxious about what happened after they and their fellow Christians died. This time of remembrance raises these questions for us too. And so do the figures going up on our television screens every night. They thought that Jesus' return was imminent and they were concerned about those who died before he came. And we wonder too, don't we? What happens to all those people who are just names and numbers to us? What happens to the people we have loved and lost? What will happen to us when we die? Paul tells them not to grieve as others do who have no hope. He's not telling them not to grieve. Grieving is necessary and good. Jesus wept for his friend Lazarus. But he does tell them not to grieve as though we had no hope. Because those of us who know God believe that Jesus died and rose again. And that whenever the end comes for us, we shall be with him, sharing in that victory. And in this picture language here, he draws their attention to the future. Jesus' final triumph over evil and death. This is what gives us confidence, what gives us hope. If we know God now, we can have no fear of death in the future. The parable in our Gospel reading may seem a very strange sort of story to us today. But apparently it could be just a slice of life from rural Palestine today. Still the bride and the bridesmaids don't know when the bridegroom will set off around the village streets back to the bride's house. He may come at night, and the bridesmaid will, will need lanterns to go out into the streets and meet him. And once the bridegroom has come, the door is shut. It's about the tragedy of unpreparedness, isn't it? Of being too late. Although they had the law of the prophets, many of Jesus' own people weren't ready for him, didn't recognize the opportunity that was there for them. And the silly girls in this story have not thought ahead. They were taken by surprise. 
and found their own lamps were empty and they couldn't follow other people's oil. We have opportunities too, opportunities to get to know God, to find peace with God, to make peace with our neighbours and with the natural world. And it's easy to let those opportunities slip by, not to heed the warnings or the promises about the future. So let's encourage one another on this day of remembrance, not only looking back at our stories from the past, but looking also towards the future. Amen. So let us declare together the faith we share in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United in, united in the company of all the faithful and looking for the coming of the kingdom, let us offer our prayers to God, the source of all life and holiness. Today is Remembrance Sunday. We remember the 8.5 million soldiers and 13 million civilians who died in the First World War, and also the many uncounted, maimed and scarred individuals that the world turned their lives into harrowing punishments to include sufferers of the post-war syndrome. The eternal rest grants unto them their God and let perpetual light shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for world peace, that there be no more wars, either locally or internationally, that there be no more world war, that you let your joy rule the world, and that you give all nations god fearing leaders who put you first, in their decision making. Lord, in your mercy, your Lord, pray. Pray. we pray for families that are still scarred from memories and impacts of the first world war, that you heal them body, soul, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, your Lord, pray. Pray. as we also celebrate Interfaith Week, we pray that the Holy Spirit guides all faiths to see that we worship and praise the same one God with true love for humanity. 
make us all work to promote world peace and tolerance of each other. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. The whole world is being ravaged by the current pandemic. We pray, we pray for forgiveness of our sins and beg you to save the world from economic doom and that you teach us how to live without polluting our garden going forward after the pandemic. Help us to put an end to the pandemic by rendering the virus impotent. We pray for the film industry, television and media industries that have been severely devastated by the pandemic. We pray that you let us all start living again and not just existing. Lord, in your mercy, hear my prayer. In accordance with the Church of England's cycle of prayer, we pray for the province of, of West Indies, that you leave your ministry there and let it flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear my prayer. We pray for the clergy and all those serving your ministry and evangelizing, that you renew our enthusiasm and diligence daily and fuel us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As written by the Church of England, Father of all, remember your holy promise and look with love on all your people, living and departed. On this day, we especially ask that you would hold forever all who have suffered during the war, those who have returned sad by warfare, those who waited anxiously at home, and those who returned wounded and disillusioned, those who mourned, and those communities that were diminished and suffered loss. Remember those who acted with kindly compassion, those who bravely risked their own lives for their comrades, and those who, in the aftermath of war, worked tirelessly for a more peaceful world. And as you remember them, remember us, O Lord, grant us peace in our time and a longing for the day when people of every language, race, and nation will be brought into the unity of Christ's kingdom. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, we now take a few seconds to put our personal requests of our government. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the, for the sake of your Son, our, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we come now to the peace. To crown all things, there must be love to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
as the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine. So, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who is sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you our holy people. And now we give you thanks that he is the King of glory who overcomes the sting of death and opens the kingdom of heaven to all believers. He is seated at your right hand in glory and we believe that he will come to be our judge. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness, Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage, hold fast that which is good. Thank you. 
Let us pray. God of peace, whose Son Jesus Christ has proclaimed, has proclaimed the kingdom and restored the broken to wholeness of life, look with compassion on the anguish of the world, and by your healing power make whole both people and nations, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Unusually, we do have time for notices on this uh, Remembrance Sunday. Um, there is Zoom coffee straight after this service, uh, probably about uh, 11.10 by the time uh, we've got ready to launch that. And we do have our Zoom prayers this evening at 7 o'clock as usual. Being in lockdown, things are online, but the things do continue online to all our online services and Bible studies and other groups are still meeting, so please do look at the notices that we sent out later on today. Um, in this month of lockdown, the Church of England is especially encouraging us to pray together as a church, and there are some resources for prayers uh, for every day of, of this current month. And again, there'll be a link to that on the notices later on today. One new notice is about uh, church bubbles uh, to extend the provision, uh, rather like Zoom coffee has been good for people to meet up. If uh, there are people, uh, and you may be one or know of people who might like to join in a handful of group, um, uh, a, a small group, a handful of people to uh, chat and support one another, uh, let me know and we will uh, divide people up into uh, fours or fives and then a folk can meet up as times to convenient to them. So it's a way of keeping together and supporting one another uh, throughout this lockdown. So now we have our final hymn. Oh, sure. 
So we come now to our act of remembrance. Let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of the peoples of the world. We remember at our first World War Memorial, Geoffrey Basin, Frederick Beale, Garth Blandy, Percy Wu, May Armstrong, Tom Carlson, Maxwell Khan, Mansell Carey, Leonard Carey, Vivian Collins, Cecil Council, Vickers Dunphy, Horace Cross, William George, Ernest Hart, James Hawes, Herbert Holmes, Arthur H. Hewson, Henry Gillis, Charles Jones, Henry Lewis, Harold Minson, Kenneth Mansbridge, Leonard Moore, Arthur Mitchelson, Thomas Owen, George Parsons, Sidney Quay, Douglas Quay, Hugh Richmond, Leslie Sarkey, Arthur G. Taylor, William Taylor, William D. Taylor, Eva Sully, and Reginald Hewton. And at this organ council memorial to those who died in the Second World War, we remember Humphrey Archer, Leslie Bailey, Robert Beer, Bernard Brown, Douglas Carpenter, Alexander Court, Herbert Elfland. Thomas Ellis, Frank Gibbon, Anthony Giles, Ian Bleed, Geoffrey Han, James Hammer, Roy Hall, Jack Hall, Frank Hornock, Ronald Hoy, Brian Jones, Kenneth Lay, Stanley McDonald, Peter Mills, Ronald Mills, Peter Robinson, Ronald Robinson, Leslie Sparks, Richard Watson, John Webb, Jeffrey Wellesman, Brian Bryant, and Anthony Barrett. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. 
at the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Ever-living God, we remember those to whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace 
calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men and women, that we may help and encourage and comfort others, and support those working for the relief of the needy, and for the peace and welfare of the nations. Lord God, our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit, give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. Amen. God see our gracious Queen, lonely and noble Queen, God save the Queen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God grants to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.